Welcome back. Banking sector continuing to face tough regulations after the financial crisis, but is regulatory reform on the agenda in Washington? I want to bring in Rick Calicut right now. He is the president and CEO of BNC Bank Corp and the chairman of the North Carolina Bankers Association. Good to see you, Rick. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. So after all of the capital raises and you've just completed another one, congratulations on that. Thank you. Do you feel that first, your own bank, you have enough capital to... Uh, put regulators at bay, and what about capital throughout the industry right now? Well, I think from a regulator perspective, uh, those conversations are tough conversations to have because, you know, the capital in the banking industry today is at the highest level it's ever been. Uh, and if you think about uh, the turn on leverage and the operating efficiencies, and particularly at the larger banks, you know, we're really just not getting the bang for our buck at that level. From our perspective, uh, we've been growing 8 10% a year. Uh, either through acquisition or organically because of the markets we're in. And there's a, a regulatory expectation, the amount of capital, particularly focused on common. You know, there are other forms of capital, sub-debt, preferred stock, things like that. But they're really uh, looking for common equity. And if you look at the stress testing and, and the, the numbers that came out of that, really tangible common, TCE1, tangible common equity, was really a really high focus there. So very, very strong capital numbers throughout the industry. And yet the broader environment is just okay. I mean, are you seeing the demand for, for loans? In our markets in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia, uh, we, we are very fortunate to be in really five of the six best markets there. So in Charleston, in Charlotte, in Raleigh, in Greenville, the upstate, uh, you know, the end of the port there in Greenville, we're seeing a lot of opportunity there. We're seeing, you know, you guys were talking about unemployment earlier. Uh, we've got some small businesses around that, you know, have had signs in the yard for months and months and months trying to hire people. Now, those are $15 an hour jobs, $16 an hour jobs, um, and they're really just not getting a lot of activity there. Why not, though? You know... Why aren't people willing to step up and take a $15 an hour job? Uh, you know... And I'm assuming you're, these are not, like, high, these are not, like, com computer programmers. Plastic injection molding, right. mm -hmm. uh, upholstery, um, you know, jobs that are manual labor, Jobs, not a new skill set that they have to learn. It, so why it's, not? It's 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 not a, a new skill set they necessarily have to learn, but there is some skill involved and some intelligence, communication skills involved in doing it. But um, you know, I don't know the answer to that. Is it because businesses are just not hiring? Well, if you look at uh, no, I think the business demand is out there for the small business guy. The business demand is out there, and we've seen some of our small business guys doing pretty well. But again, you know, they really want to put on a second shift, and they can't find the people to do it. Mm -hmm. And and so, you know, some of the smaller communities um, that in in North Carolina, in particular, there's been a huge migration to the metropolitan areas. Mm -hmm. Well those small towns are going away the old-fashioned way. They're rusting. Well, that's where a I lot come of from those, one of them. That's right. That's well, where a lot of those workers came from. One of the biggest uh, things that has happened in this space in an answer to the increasing regulatory reform of 22,000 pages of Dodd-Frank, as well as the low interest rate environment, has been consolidation in this space. Are you seeing more of consolidation happening in the banking sector? And you've been leading it. Well, you know, I'm a, uh, a perpetrator <laughs> right, right. In, in, in that regard, but it's been, hey, you either get big or, get go, or go home. I mean, yeah. you really had to figure out a way to spread that, that regulatory uh, cost over a much larger platform. Uh, and chairing the association this year, um, since Dodd-Frank was enacted, 40% of the community banks in North Carolina are gone. Wow. You know, we used to have 100 and some change. Now we got 58 or 59 community banks. Do you need to get even bigger from where you are right now to even have bigger scale, For more us, scale? I think we're in a good spot, but you really need to think about being north of $5 billion. We're going to be $7.5 billion by the end of the year. Uh, but we're beginning to have those conversations about, well, okay, well, if you go over 10 then what happens? Then the CFPB begins to get in your business, and, and you have other another hurdle, you know. And, and then you'll have to cost cut even more. Well, you have to cost cut even more, but you really have to think about what's your real return. Uh, you know, it was a $7 billion bank that just announced recently in North Carolina uh, that they were selling, and they had just bought another bank within six months and hadn't even converted it yet. Wow. And then there's technology that's working its way in as well. Let's talk about that for a second. There's a report that Samsung is developing technology to allow users to access their accounts via an iris scan. So, I don't know, do we want that, that you, using your eyes to, 
personalized. <laughs> is that something that it's you're a pretty, seeing? It's pretty cool, you know, it's, it's what sort kind of the of old What's the uh, James biggest Bond innovation deal. you've seen in banking? Since the ATM machine, because that uh, was a, that was a pretty big innovation. The ATM machine. My ability to send her money from my phone yeah. to her. That's account. a big deal. You know, my daughter's in college, and that's what you know. You'd they like go out to, to dinner. That. And, Feel free. You know, well, I need to send you eight bucks because I, you know, you just. So you're my just gun. transferring it right from your phone from one account to another account. Yeah. yeah, or and she's in another bank, so I can transfer it to her account at her bank. And that's PayPal's Venmo division because it's actually a social network that people are doing it on, and that it's been growing leaps and bounds, and they just entered into. A New partnership with Visa that's going to that's going to make an eight times addressable market. It's growing so fast. That's that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, but you know, from a you know big deal in the in the space today is cybersecurity. I mean, it's yeah. it's uh, you know it used to be are you going to make a bad loan and what are your loan losses going to be today? It's uh, cybersecurity. So and can we trust that our money is safe? Well, I, I, absolutely. I mean, the amount of dollars and cents we're spending on cybersecurity every day, and it, but it's really not about somebody coming into the bank and getting your money. It's, da it's data, protecting the data and trying to lock down the data. And it's not today's data or last week's data or last month's data. It's two years ago, three years ago, and having gone through 14 acquisitions, you know, we're trying to go through an exercise of trying to lock down data from banks we acquired three and four and five years ago. 14 so. acquisitions, wow. Yeah. Is that one of your biggest expenses, controlling in, in terms of investment going into cybersecurity? Well, it really is. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the um, uh, you know, the, uh, the social risk of a breach. Uh, reputation risk from a breach is dramatic, and particularly in the bank space, it's, it's dramatic. Yeah. So it's important. Rick, great to have you on the show. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you so much, Rick Calicut. There.